once students have a basic understanding of how to play the trumpet, it's time that they start focusing on detail work and intonation. There's two things that they need to be able to do in order to perform uh, with excellent intonation. One is they have to be able to hold a steady pitch. Sounds simple, but for younger players, keeping embouchure uh, steady while they're playing in different ranges is a problem. So the first exercise they need to do is simply playing with a tuner and holding long tones. First, they could do this uh, using with the visual. In other words, they're actually looking at the tuner. And their goal is to first start, let's say, play the note low C and hold the tuner right dead center on zero for 10 seconds. And they do that going up to the note D up the C scale for another 10 seconds and so forth. When they get better at that, maybe the next week they could work up to 15 seconds and so forth, with always trying to maintain it on a perfect zero on the tuner. When uh, time goes on, and you can add the sound to it, ideally having them do the same thing by just listening to it without the visual. What we're trying to train them to do is to know what it feels like and sounds like to maintain a steady pitch. Once they're able to do that on individual notes, now it's time to do it in motion. So you can simply set the uh, tuner and have them identify just the first note of a two-note scale. So they could go C, D, C, D, let's say back and forth in half notes at first. And each time they come back to low C, they want to make sure that it is on zero. Ideally, it'd be nice if they could do it for C and D, but focusing specifically on the first note of the scale. Then they can add the three notes of scale, one, two, three, two, one, and always seeing if that first note of the scale is in tune. As they go on, they can start measuring more than just one note. For instance, focusing on the bottom note of the scale, top note of the scale. So C scale, and then they hold the note high C, they walk back down, hold note low C, and each time, focusing on being perfectly in tune. Once they can hold the embouchure steady and hold a note in tune, now they have to know how to be able to manipulate the pitch so they could play with others. And this is an exercise they could use uh, to learn how to do that. And it's pitch bending. So to, the way to do pitch bending is simply opening and closing the jaw is the most basic way. So when they open the jaw, the pitch is going to go flat. And when they raise the jaw slightly, the pitch will go up. You could also use the words, instead of uh, the jaw, you could say firm up or loosen the lips. It gives you the same results. So I'm going to use this right now as being my oral cavity. I'm going to open and close it, or jaw open and close, and listen to the pitch. Is low C. <laughs> to learn how to bend the pitch before they could do anything else. So right now, it doesn't need to be done with a tuner. They just need to be able to do the exercise. And they could do that going up the C scale. So do on the note D, open and closing the mouth. If you rather, you can just have them tighten and loosen the lips, give the same, uh, the same results. But I find mostly that students need something a little more concrete than just the lips, the embouchure open and closing. In the, in the mouth. Uh, another more advanced exercise is a lip bending exercise that uh, goes like this. First demonstrating on the note low C, B, low C, as such. The next time I play it, I'm going to do the same thing, but just with the lips. I'm going to uh, show with the finger, but not actually press the valve down. So this is what it would look like the second time. Now this is definitely a more uh, advanced skill for your high school students, I would suggest. Um, but if you get younger students doing it, wonderful. Now we go to a half step down. So B, B flat, B. And once
once again, we do the pitch bending, and we could sort of uh, demonstrate with the fingers as though we're switching. So. <laughs> Open and closing the mouth, or you can think of tightening and loosening the lips. If you have a group of students, you can have half of them playing the real fingerings. At the same time, have the other half of the students do the just the lip changing or the embouchure changing. This way, everyone always has a note uh, as a frame of reference. At home, they can either do it back and forth like I just did, regular fingerings and just lip, or they can use the piano like this. So of course you'll teach them about transposition, but and then now they could play along with a frame of reference. Beyond that, uh, most trumpet players would recommend uh, using the mouthpiece buzzing. And this develops a lot of ear training because there's no valves anymore. So one exercise that you do with the buzzing, it's a, more of an advanced exercise, would be playing scales, but using a, a frame of reference. So using the B-flat concert scale, or our C scale. <laughs> You can make up any scale exercises you want, but uh, of course this takes a bit of coordination. That's why it's better for the older students if they're going to use a piano or electric keyboard at home. Either way, they could always use themselves as the reference point. So they play a scale, take the mouthpiece off, and buzz it. In all these exercises, it's teaching them to maintain a steady embouchure and teaching them how to manipulate the embouchure so they could change the intonation to match other people.